I just got off the telephone with somebody and trying to explain to them how simple it is to take and calibrate a, any kind of an audiometer, but particularly we were talking about a school screener or an industrial grade, you know, pure tone only headphone audiometer. I'm not a video person, so this is going to be a little bit on the hokey side, but I'll show you how really simple it is. It really is in order to do a, a any kind of an audiometer, but this is one for the school or industrial grade audiometer. Um, I probably am going to set one out maybe with the Benson or with a Mako 25, but eh, let's see what I can do. Well, I did find an audiometer and I found a calibrator. What do you know? Uh, it's a 102. In other words, it's a, a class two microphone that's installed in this one. And it's just absolutely fine, does all the things that are necessary for the OSHA compliance and school screening testing. Um, we can't really tell the difference. In modern day microphones, we can't tell the difference whether an audiometer was calibrated on a, uh, uh, on a class one or a class two uh, system. There's a limitation though on this one that it only does pure tone screening audiometers with headphones. Big difference of it is, is the price. 6,995 bucks. Okay, that's the whole thing complete with the PC and the whole nine yards. Just plug it in and away you go. Now I'll show you what it is right now. I'm just going to take this around over here and I'll bring this around over here and this is what we have. There's the ACS 102 coupler, weight, headphones, spots to plug things in, PC. I've got it hooked up over here to a inner acoustics. What is that? A um, 608? I don't even have it, have to have it plugged into the wall because that, the, that audiometer is powered off the USB. And the same thing as what this uh, ACS calibration system is. We get the, the power from the 3.0 USB port. And I'm bringing this around up over here and it shows you the picture of the of that audiometer right there on the screen. Simple, all I have to do. Now, here's the patch cords. Patch cords coming out of here, going around. They're connected back to the back of the audiometer. That white cable coming out over there is the USB. It powers around over here and it comes around and it's plugged in right there. Okay. That just happens to be a, an expansion thing for USB plugs that are going over here. See a little red light down over there? That well, it can't, doesn't show up very well, but that says the system is on and working. There's the wait for it, and there's the headphones that are plugged in where it says headphones. Come back up over here. See the screen? I'm simply going to come up over here. I'm going to calibrate the audiometer. Gives me some choices of making an interface over here, which is of no concern to, right now. Yeah, user control, fully control. I'm going to do the headphones, and I'm going to do the electrical portion. That's a little different because there's a lot of uh, calibration systems that can't do the electrical thing, and I think you'll, I'll explain that to you just a little bit later on. Or give me a call, uh, and I'll explain it. I can do a measure only or a measure and adjust. I'm going to just take and do a measure and adjust, and I'm going to say, okay. Other than that, it says put the headphone on the right, put the right headphone on the coupler. Come back down over here. Place that on that. Put the weight back over there. That's on there stable. All right. Coming back in over here and say OK. Started doing the calibration to 125 on the right ear. Let me get down over here and get ready on that a little bit. I must have adjusted that. I didn't see it. 250 on the right ear. 0.2. 500. Let's see what that is. Oh, I'm getting a little bit slow on the take here. Like I said, I'm a better calibrator manufacturer than I am a video taker. That's 1.7 off, and you see that it makes an adjustment. I'm going to just leave this down so you can have a good look at it. Let's see if this one. There's 1.7 is the original one. It come back over and adjusted back to two tenths of a dB. And that's how simple it is to calibrate that audiometer. It's going to run through the right headphone. Now, we're doing everything that that audiometer can do. I could have went back in and selected out a different pattern and only done the 500 to 8,000 frequencies, but we think if you're going to do a calibration, you might as well do the thing right. 
and that one was really out of calibration, which comes up in red and it adjusted it and brings it back in and it's done. Automatically, it's going to jump back over now and do the distortion. It takes the distortion. This is the acoustical distortion of the right headphone. A little bit later on, we're going to go back in and we're going to do the electrical distortion so you can see if there's a difference between the two of them. Obviously, then, if the acoustical is off and the electrical is not, you have a bed headphone, which is a, a rarity. This is plugging along, and you see how fast it's doing, and it's doing every frequency. And I'm just going to keep quiet for a minute and let you observe here until we get down. I guess I could have speeded this up a little bit. Well, we'll just set it. Maybe I can edit it out. If you notice, we've actually changed the, the software has changed that. The ACS system is taking control of that audiometer. And now you see it just changed it, the output level from 100 dB to 90. These are all manufacturer specifications for calibration. Now we're going to see something here. Probably, oh, look at that. It's telling me, put on the left headphone. I'm going to come back out over here. Take that headphone off. Lay it down here. Put the left one on. Put the weight back on. I'm just going to come back up over here. Push the OK. You see there, the system has already changed over to the left ear, and it's doing its thing. And that, very frankly, you're, we're going to do more, but that's how simple it is to do a calibration of an audiometer. Now, clinical one is a great deal different. If it's interface, it's the same thing. It's only just more of it because you're going to do bone conduction or high frequency. By the way, if this has warble, if this audiometer had warble in it, <clears throat> it would automatically do the warble also because that pattern is set up. That pattern of what that audiometer is capable of doing is set up in the software. We know that that audiometer, if it does warble, it will have it on there. I don't know if it does or not, but we're going to find out. There you see it was out of spec. Brought it in, and that audiometer is calibrated. 6,000, one more. Ooh, that was really off. Well, I've grabbed different headphones on here. Who knows what I did? I just grabbed a bunch of stuff over here. It doesn't mean that the audiometer is bad. It probably just means that I have got a different set of headphones. Remember, we're not doing hearing testing around here. All we're doing is making calibrators. I'll just let this run a little bit. <clears throat> Clear my throat so I can talk. And the uh, reason I'm staying with this is because I want to show you that when it finishes up with this acoustical portion, it'll go into the electrical. And we'll test rise, fall, overshoot, crosstalk. Every function that that audiometer should have done to it in an exhaustive calibration is automatically done with the ACS system. There is nothing left to chance. We put no OKs. No check marks, no nothing on a calibration sheet. If you have a calibration sheet with an OK on it, more than likely it wasn't done. Just as easy, if I if I say if I if I know it's OK, I must have seen a number in order to be able to find out what that OK is. Well, it's a lot less problem just to write down the number than it is to write OK.